BestBookBits.com presents Letters from a Self-Made Merchant to His Son by George Horace Lorma. Published in 1901, this book is a series of letters written by a successful entrepreneur, John Graham, to his son offering various pieces of advice throughout the boy's college years and early career. For example, number one, it isn't so much knowing a whole lot as knowing a little and how to use it that counts. And number two, Putting off an easy thing makes it hard, and putting off a hard one makes it impossible. Three, a good wife doubles a man's expenses and doubles his happiness. And that's a pretty good investment if a fellow's got the money to invest, and many other insights. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of Letters from a Self-Made Merchant to His Son. You'll find that education's about the only thing lying around loose in this world, and that it's about the only thing a fellow can have as much of as he's willing to haul away. Some men learn the value of money by not having any and starting out to pry a few dollars loose from the old millions that are lying around. And some learn it by having 50000 or so left to them and starting out to spend it as if it were 50000 a year. Some men learn the value of truth by having to do business with liars, and some by going to Sunday school. Some men learn the cussedness of whiskey by having a drunken father, and some by having a good mother. Some men get an education from other men and newspapers and public libraries, and some get it from professors and parchments. It doesn't make any special difference how you get a half Nelson on the right thing, just so you get it and freeze on to it. The first thing that any education ought to give a man is character, and the second thing is education. I know a young fellow with the right sort of stuff in him preaches to himself harder than anyone else can, and that's his mighty often switched off the right path by having it pointed out to him in the wrong way. I'm anxious that you should be a good scholar. I'm more anxious that you should be a good, clean man. Education is... A good deal like eating. A fella can't always tell you which particular thing did him good, but he can usually tell which one did him harm. College doesn't make fools, it develops them. It doesn't make bright men, it develops them. A fool will turn out a fool whether he goes to college or not, though he'll probably turn out a different sort of fool. It isn't so much knowing a whole lot as knowing a little and how to use it that counts. The sooner you adjust your spending to what your earning capacity will be, the easier they will find it to live together. I can't hand out any ready-made success to you. It would do you no good, and it would do the house harm. There is plenty of room at the top here, but there is no elevator in the building. Payday is always a month off for the spendthrift, and he is never able to realize more than 60 cents on any dollar that comes to him. But a dollar is worth 106 cents to a good businessman, and he never spends the dollar. It's the man who keeps saving up and expenses down that buys an interest in the concern. The boy who does anything just because the other fella do, it is apt to scratch a poor man's back all his life. Some men learn all they know from books, others from life. Both kinds are narrow. The first are all theory, the second are all practice. I wanted you to form good mental habits, just as I want you to have a clean, straight physical ones. It's not what a man does during working hours, but after them, that breaks down his health. A clear mind is one that is swept clean of business at 6 o'clock every night and isn't open for it again until after the shutters are taken down next morning. Putting off an easy thing makes it hard, and putting off a hard one makes it impossible. Habits rule a man's life. Habits rule a man's life. On travel, seeing the world is like charity. It covers a multitude of sins, and like charity, it ought to begin at home. Have something to say. Say it. Stop talking. It's all right when you're calling on a girl or talking with friends after dinner to run a conversation like a Sunday school excursion with stops to pick flowers, but in the office... Your sentences should be the shortest distance possible between periods. It's easy to look wise than to talk wise. Say less than the other fellow and listen more than you talk. For when a man's listening, he isn't telling on himself and he's flattering the fellow who is. 
You'll read a good deal about love at first sight in novels, and there may be something in it for all I know. But I'm dead certain there's no such thing as love at first sight in business. A man's got to keep company a long time, and come early and stay late and sit close, before he can get a girl or job worth having. All he ever needed was a few hundred for a starter, and to get that, he decided to let me in on the ground floor. I wanted to say right here that whenever anyone offers you to let you in on the ground floor, it's a pretty safe rule to take the elevator to the roof garden. I don't know anything that a young businessman ought to keep more entirely to himself than his dislikes, unless it is his likes. It's generally expensive to have either, but it's bankruptcy to tell about them. Superiority makes every man feel it's equal. It is courtesy without condescension. Affability without familiarity, self-sufficiency without selfishness, simplicity without schneid. There's no easy way to cure foolishness than to give a man leave to be foolish. And the only way to show a fellow that he's chosen the wrong business is to let him try it. I want to say right here that the easiest way in the world to make enemies is to hire friends. Get the scent in your nostrils and keep your nose to the ground. And don't worry too much about the end of the chase. The fun of the things in the run and not in the finish. Never marry a poor girl who's been raised like a rich one. She simply traded the virtues of the poor for the vices of the rich without going long on their good points. To marry for money or to marry without money is a crime. There's no real objection to marrying a woman with a fortune, but there is to marrying a fortune with a woman. While you're at it, there's nothing like picking out a good looking wife, because even the handsomest woman looks homely sometimes, and so you get a little variety. But a homely one can only look worse than usual. Pretty is only skin deep, but that's deep enough to satisfy any reasonable man. Then too, if a fellow is bound to marry a fool, and a lot of men have to if they're going to hitch up, into a well-matched team, there's nothing like picking a good-looking one. You can trust a woman's taste on everything except men, and it's mighty lucky that she slips up there and would pretty nigh all be bachelors. Marrying the wrong girl is the one mistake that you've got to live with all your life. There's nothing in the world sicker looking than the grim of a man who's trying to join in heartily when the laughter's on him, and to pretend that he likes it. Always remember that a man who's making a claim never underestimates his case, and that you can generally compromise. It looks to me as if you were trying only half as hard as you could, and in trying, it's the second half that brings results. He knew his business, and when a fellow knows his business, he doesn't have to explain to people that he does. It isn't what a man knows, but what he thinks he knows that he brags about. Big talk means little knowledge. There's a vast difference between having a carload of miscellaneous facts sloshing around loose in your head and getting all mixed up in transit and carrying the same assortment properly boxed and crated for convenient handling and immediate delivery. Poverty never spoils a good man, but prosperity often does. It's easy to stand hard times because that's the only thing you can do. But in good times, the fool killer has to do night work. Most men get cross-eyed when they come to size themselves up and see an angel instead of what they're trying to look at. There's nothing that tells the truth to a woman like a mirror, or that lies harder to a man. Tact is the knack of keeping quiet at the right time. Tact is the knack of keeping quiet at the right time, or being so agreeable yourself that no one else can be disagreeable to you, of making inferiority feel like equality. A tactful man can pull the stinger from a bee without getting stung. When you make a mistake, don't make the second one. Keeping it, it to yourself. Own up. The time to sort out rotten eggs is at the nest. Some salesmen think that selling is like eating, to satisfy an existing appetite. But a good salesman is like a good cook. He can create an appetite when the buyer isn't hungry. Of course, clothes don't make the man but they make all of him except his hands and face during business hours, and that's a pretty considerable area of the human animal. A dirty shirt may hide a pure heart, but it seldom covers clean skin. If you look as if you had slept in your clothes, most men will jump 
to the conclusion that you have, and you will never get to know them well enough to explain that your head is so full of noble thoughts that you haven't had time to bother with the dandruff on your shoulders. Appearances are deceitful, I know, but so long as they are, there's nothing like having them deceive for us instead of against us. But it isn't enough to be all right in this world. You've got to look all right as well. Because two-thirds of success is making people think you are all right. A man can't do what he pleases in this world, because the higher he climbs, the plainer people can see him. Jack had enthusiasm, and enthusiasm is the best shortening for any job. It makes heavy work light. A good many young fellows envy their boss because they think he makes the rules and can do as he pleases. As a matter of fact, he's the only man in the shop who can't. He's like the fellow on the tightrope. There's plenty of serenity under him and lots of room around him, but he's got to keep his feet on the wire all the time and travel straight ahead. No man can ask more than he gives. No man can ask more than he gives. A fellow who can't take orders can't give them. There's no alarm clock for the sleepy man like an early rising manager, and there's nothing breeds work in an office like a busy boss. You can't work individuals by general rules. Every man is a special case and needs a special pill. The fellow who can't read human nature can't manage it. Be slow to hire and quick to fire. Be slow to hire and quick to fire. But when you find that you've hired the wrong man, you can get rid of him too quickly. Pay him an extra month, but don't let him stay another day. Some fellows who can only see those above them, and others can only see those under them. But a good man is cross-eyed and can see both ends at once. A man's as good as he makes himself, but no man's any good because his grandfather was. A man who does big things is too busy to talk about them. There are two things you never want to pay attention to. Abuse and flattery. The first can't harm you, and the second can't help you. As long as you can't please both sides in this world, there's nothing like pleasing your own side. There are mighty few people who can see any side to a thing except their own side. Worrying is one game in which, if you guess right, you don't get any satisfaction out of your smartness. A busy man has no time to bother with it. Money ought never to be the consideration in marriage, but it is always ought to be a consideration. When a boy and girl don't think enough about money before the ceremony, they're going to have to think altogether too much about it after. A good wife doubles a man's expenses and doubles his happiness, and that's a pretty good investment if a fellow's got the money to invest. I've never been one who could get a great deal of satisfaction out of dreams. With most people... Happiness is something that is always just a day off, but I have made it a rule never to put off being happy till tomorrow. And that's a wrap on Letters from a Self-Made Merchant to His Son. Subscribe to our channel and take a look at the hundreds of book summaries uploaded previously. To find hundreds of written summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com, and for hundreds of audio podcast summaries, find us on mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. Like and share if you got something from this summary and comment on what one thing stood out for you. Thanks for watching and have yourself an amazing day. Take care.